This afternoon, this evening, the message is quite important. It's a standalone message because we're getting ready for Christmas and I will continue the spiritual discipline series only next year. But I want to share something that I believe is critical in our understanding of God as a church and in your spiritual journey as a believer. The Bible does not reveal God as a lone ranger who exists in the universe all alone by himself. God, just one person, a solitary ego, all by himself, all alone in the universe. This is not the God of the Bible. When Jesus came, he explained that God is a trinity. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, God is a trinity. Yeah. Oh, suddenly, I'm not used to the loud responses. You know, I've been away preaching all the different services. So turn to your neighbors and you hardly could hear anything. So you guys just shocked me. <laughs> God is a trinity. He is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One being who exists in three persons, in very close fellowship, in a very loving communion. Even more importantly, Jesus came to show us that God is love. He really is. This means that the Father is love, the Son is love, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. All three are full of love. Now, many people think that the Father and the Son, they function like a good cop and bad cop. And the Spirit is just a reward for you believing Christ. The Father is always very angry and oppressive and judgmental, but Jesus, so unlike Him, full of grace and full of mercy. Jesus is the good cop. The Father is the bad cop. The Holy Spirit, well, He's the bonus prize you get for believing in Jesus. But when you study the Bible, when you go into the Word, this is not how God reveals Himself. All three are full of love overflowing love. And when you read the story of Jesus, he's always working very closely in loving communion with his Father and the Spirit. Now, the first time God revealed himself as a trinity was at the baptism of Jesus Christ at the River Jordan. So turn with me in your Bibles and go with me to Matthew chapter 3, and we are going to look at verse 16, Matthew 3 and verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. For the first time in history, God publicly revealed Himself as a triune God. The Father spoke from heaven and openly expressed His love for His Son. You are my beloved Son. I love you so much. And then, from the Father, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus and poured out of all the love of the Father into Jesus. Jesus, in turn, was so faithful and so willing to obey that through the Spirit, He returned His love and His devotion back to the Father. So God exists as a circle of love. The Father loves the Son by the Spirit, and the Son, through the Spirit, returned His devotion back to the Father, an eternal cycle of love. For the first time in history, God pulled back the curtains of heaven and showed us the inner workings of His divine life. This is how God's inner life is like. He is a God who exists in a circle of love, a never-ending circle of intimate, loving communion and fellowship between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Now, this is totally revolutionary because until now, it has never been clear before. Not in the Old Testament, not anywhere. 
The Father loves the Son. The Son loves His Father. And the Holy Spirit is the essence of love, the bond of love between them, participating in that love. So our God is a very communal God in an eternally loving, happy, joyful fellowship, a communion between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, each loving the other, delighting in one another, selflessly giving of themselves to each other, so fully satisfied and complete and fulfilled in their relationship. They are overflowing in never-ending delight. And in their overflowing love and joy, they want to open up this circle to you and I, to invite us to come in, to experience their divine embrace. And this is what, exactly what it means when we pray the benediction. You know, the last verse in 2 Corinthians 13, that you will experience the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of your heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. You see, what is that? That is an invitation for us to come in to their circle of love an invitation to experience their divine embrace. In this circle of love, there is healing. We are restored, we are renewed, we are strengthened, and we are changed. Because it's a love that is totally unselfish and unconditional. A perfect love, the Bible says, that casts out every fear and every worry. It is a love that fulfills that completely satisfies you. A love that is so delightful and overflowing with joy, it gives life meaning Amen. and purpose. Amen. It makes life worth living for. It makes us looking forward every day to wake up again to live this life because it's a love that transforms us into the likeness of Christ. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hey, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big clap. Everybody say out loud. Say, my God, my God is, love. is love. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, your God is love. So when you understand that, you realize the day of Pentecost was more than just the outpouring of power. It was an outpouring of love. The Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh, drawing us in, wooing us, persuading us, inviting us into the space in between the three of them to come into the divine embrace, to occupy the space in their shared love. And in this space, we get soaked, we get filled until we are drenching until we are overwhelmed and oozing out and overflowing in love ourselves. One more time, turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, you must come into that overflowing love. And then God wants us to mimic Him, to copy Him, to open ourselves up to others, to now let our love overflow out of us to touch the world and to bring others into our loving embrace. This is the reason why this Christmas, we are so excited about sharing the love of Jesus to everyone. That last week, we reached out to the poor and needy, both locally and overseas, All right? And then, what do we do? Tomorrow afternoon, Emerge is sharing God's love to the youth. The next week, we want God's love to overflow out of us to touch others at our candlelight services. And then another week later, at our Christmas drama. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand, hallelujah. So salvation is not just escaping hell and going to heaven when you die, no. The whole goal of salvation is to come into the loving embrace of the triune God, to enjoy God to be one with Him, to be changed by Him. If you miss this, 
then you miss the whole purpose of why you're even saved. One of the greatest honors for Sun and I in our lives is to have Dr. Cho as our pastor and our spiritual father, to be part of his family, to love him as a dad, and to have him love us back as his son and his daughter. One time, a whole group of us were herded to his office for some after-service fellowship. Upon arriving, many just stood by the door chit-chatting. We are at his office, and some of my friends were just standing, stood at the door, and they were talking. And they spent the whole hour there talking by the door of the office without Dr. Cho. Others stepped in a little further and came and gathered at the reception area and chit-chatted with Dr. Cho's secretary, <laughs> talking about the schedules, office filings, and just on and on about administrative matters. I was with them for a little while, and I thought to myself, um, this is not why <laughs> we were asked to be here, right? So I quietly slipped away and walked into Dr. Cho's room. I opened the door, and to my surprise, I found him sitting there alone all by himself. And I said, Dr. Cho, is it okay for me to come in? He smiled widely at me. And you know, when Dr. Cho smiled, you can't see his eyes anymore. <laughs> he smiled so widely, say, yes, Kong Hee, please come in. I've been waiting for all of you for a long time. Where are the rest? <laughs> I look back. Some are still standing, chatting by the door. Some are chatting away at the reception area. And here I was, alone with Dr. Cho in his room. Dr. Cho then said, my wife has prepared a wonderful dinner at home. Would you like to come along? I thought to myself, hey, isn't this the reason for being here? <laughs> to enjoy fellowship, to sup with Dr. Cho, to commune with him. He then invited Sun and I to get into his car, his Hyundai Genesis and took us to his home for dinner with his wife. We had such a wonderful time eating and fellowshipping that night. After dinner, Mrs. Cho played some hymns on the piano and we sang, we worshiped the Lord. It was so wonderful, so delightful. But let me tell you, it's the same with our, with our salvation. The whole goal is not just to get to the door or the reception of heaven someday. <laughs> It is to come into the loving embrace of Almighty God. Come on, go ahead and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But if this isn't your experience and your reality, then you have missed the forest for the trees. We have missed the whole purpose why God sent Jesus to save us. The whole goal is not just the forgiveness of sins or to escape judgment, to siam hell, or just to get some blessings from God. No, it is way, way, way more than that. The finished work of the cross is just the first step, the entry level. The work is certainly finished for Jesus, but it's only beginning for us. When we accept Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit brings us into an intimate relationship with the triune God, indwelling us, infilling us, overwhelming us, overflowing out of us. <laughs> Look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. It says, God's love has been poured, into our, poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. How many of you have the Holy Spirit tonight? Just wave your hands, right? And this is the whole purpose. Love is a gift from God that comes with the Holy Spirit. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, it is this love that gives us victory over sin and death, giving us the power to live a victorious life. It is this love that gives us the power to endure trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, demons, the uncertainties of the present and of the future. It is this love 
that makes us more than conquerors in all these things. Let's all read Romans 8 and verse 37 together because you, I know you, you love this verse. So let's all read together. It's on your screen. Let's all say together out loud. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Let's do it one more time, right? I want you to say it five times louder. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Turn your neighbors on your left and right and say, God's love make you more than a conqueror. In Romans chapter 8, Paul makes it very clear. It is this love poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's what life with God is all about. This is what carries us through the dark moments and keeps us going when we feel weary and dry and burn out. Love is what convinces us that our salvation is real. That life with Jesus is worth living for. Love is what empowers us to live for God every single day and keep us going and to give ourselves to serve others in Jesus' name. Paul says, the love of God compels me. In the four Gospels, this is the real abundant life that Jesus is talking about. Abundant life is not just getting more money more wealth, more possession, power, and prestige. No. This love is the living water that satisfies. John chapter 4 and verse 14. It is the overflowing river gushing out of our innermost being. John 7 verse 38. It is this love that transforms, that changes us, making us more and more like Jesus. So as we come to the end of this year, how many of you want this river of love to well up more and more in you, to increase more and more? Just lift up your hands, right? Yeah. Then you need to aim for three simple things. <laughs> I want to tell you, you already know two of them. But I want you to grow deeper in them. I want you to become very excellent in them. Become an expert. That you have black belt in those two things. <laughs> the third one may be new to you but it's absolutely necessary if you want to grow in love. Now, let me tell you, all three of them, they are not works of righteousness. They are not works of righteousness to gain merits. You do them not because you want to make God love you more. God already loves you unconditionally. They are simply desires you have. God-pleasing desires that will take you deeper and deeper into the experience of the love of God. You will have a greater experience of God. You will go deeper in God. Then there's somebody on your left and right and say, get ready to grow deeper in love. Yeah. Okay, the first one. Look in your Bible. Numbers chapter 4, and it says over here in verse 18, the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord is slow to anger, talk to me, abounding in love. Do you know this phrase appears nine times in the Bible? It takes a very, 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 very long time for God to get angry. God is not easily irritable. He is not ultra-sensitive or easily provoked or offended. God doesn't fly off a handle. Why? Because He's full of love. He is abounding in love. He's what? Abounding in love. In other words, love puts the brakes on any anger. You don't even have time for the anger to build up. Just when it's about to build up, love causes it to fizzle away. When you look at Jesus Christ, he's so very patient and kind and gentle. So Jesus teaches us like this. And I shared this scripture so many times this year. Matthew 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. 
for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here, Jesus talks about the easy yoke and the light burden, about living and working and serving out the rest in your soul. But what is the key to all this? I know you want to have the easy yoke and the light burden. I know you want to work out of rest. But what's the key? Zero anger. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in, in heart. What is that? Zero anger, right? If you have zero anger, you will have rest for your soul. I've been saying this for the past two years, and I know it's not easy. But by the Spirit, you can do it. I'm here to encourage you, to tell you that from personal experience, by the Holy Spirit, you can live a life with zero anger. Tell your neighbors on your left and right, just show the finger, do like this, zero anger. Yeah, zero anger. For the longest time, you all know this, this is my biggest weakness, my temper. If you don't believe it, just ask Pastor Yan Chi. <laughs> Son used to tell me, Kong, this temper of yours is out of control. It's impossible for anyone to work with you. Even I can't work with you. <laughs> because I used to think that being a strong leader, especially a leader with visions and dreams, it means that I must exert the force of my personality to get things done. And I shouldn't suffer fools gladly. So I use my anger as a tool to get people to know I'm the boss. I'm the senior pastor. I'm the visionary. You better shape up or ship out. It's my way or the highway. So I use my temper to intimidate, to punish the staff and my disciples. And after a while, they felt that being around me was like treading on eggshells. One little thing that didn't go my way, kaboom, you get blasted to kingdom come. And when I ex exploded, I left a lot of people hurt and devastated. Do you know one of the most poisonous snakes in the whole world is the rattlesnake? Because it has a rattle at the end of its tail and it makes the rattling sound, right? You've seen movies on this. When a rattlesnake is cornered and stressed out, it can become so angry, it loses self-control and it bites itself. And of course, it dies. When you are angry and you go into a rage, you are biting and poisoning yourself. And each time you do that, a part of your soul dies. Bit by bit, you're killing yourself. And just like love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, temper is the fruit of the devil. Every time you give in to your temper, you become an angrier person. And the more irritated you are, the more irritable you become. And even when you finally calm down, and simmer down. What now festers on the inside is bitterness. And that's how people become bitter with life, with family, with marriage, with ministry, and sometimes even with God. Because deep down inside, they are angry. Everything changed for me the day I read Matthew 5.22, where Jesus says, do not be angry. Do not be angry. And no qualification. When I am angry, I grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 30. I push the Holy Spirit away. When you push the Holy Spirit away, you are pushing love away. So I say, Lord, I want zero anger in my life. Come, Holy Spirit, help me not to be easily irritable, not to lose self-control. When you pray like that, you will find His grace to be more sufficient. 
the more the Holy Spirit took me into that circle of love, into that loving, divine embrace, step by step, step by step, the anger fizzled away. And the more you're filled with the love of God, the less angry you'll be, and vice versa. The less angry you are, the more love wells up inside. So as we come to the end of this year, you decide again. Lord, help me to have zero anger. Everybody say, I will have zero anger. One more time, turn to your neighbors on the left and right and say, zero anger, zero anger. Yeah. That's the first thing. Number two, are you ready? Constant forgiveness. Look at the verse again. Numbers chapter 14. And look at verse 18. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving. Abounding in love and forgiving. God is so full of love and he's so full of forgiveness. Why? Because the two are synonymous. There are two sides of the same coin. God is forgiving precisely because he's loving. You can't have one without the other. The way of love is the way of forgiveness. Just look at the Bible, 1 John chapter four. Let's go to 1 John chapter four. And it says over here in verse eight, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So John is saying here, if there is no forgiveness, then you don't really know God. <laughs> because God is love. God is forgiveness. If you can't forgive, you don't know Him. Look at verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. Only when we forgive will God live in us, and His love grows and matures and is perfected in us. Look at verse 16. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Ah, again, this is the what? Coming into that divine embrace. You're living in God and God living in you. This is how you occupy the space in the circle of love, by choosing to live in constant forgiveness. So can I just love without forgiving the one who hurt me or offended me? No. Look at verse 20. It says in verse 20, Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. You see that? You can't claim to love God and not forgive. You can't claim to have the love of God on the inside and yet hate somebody. But pastor, you don't know what my father has done to me. You don't know how my mom has mistreated me. You don't know what my husband has done, what my ex-wife has done, how my business partner has cheated me, how that church leader has deeply hurt me. You have no idea how much pain I have gone through. Yes, I don't. But Jesus does. And one day he will make right every wrong that you have suffered. But still, Jesus wants you to choose forgiveness, not for others' sake, but for your own sake, so that you can stop suffering. We forgive for our own good. When I choose to forgive, it's for my own good. Look, sometimes the person we forgive might not even care. Huh, you want to forgive me? You think I've done something wrong? Hey man, I've done nothing wrong. In fact, you deserve it. You had it coming. So some people say, unless you say sorry, I won't forgive. No, you don't, your forgiveness is not dependent on others. Sometimes people are just plain nasty and mean. But we must still forgive. 
not for their sake, but for our own sake, so that we can stay in the flow of God's love and not get stuck. Oh, come on, go ahead and praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Amen. And forgiveness must be a constant daily decision. Jesus wants us to pray every single day. Father, we forgive those who sin against us. Just like how we ask God for our daily bread. Every day we choose to say, God, give me my provision. So every day we say, God, I choose to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive again and again and again. You keep forgiving, 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 forgiving until you're walking in a constant atmosphere of forgiveness. Until you exist in a constant state of forgiveness. That is your state. You are just forgiveness. Now, you know, I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life. But I want to be in a constant state of forgiveness so I can stay in the, in the love of God. So you forgive and you forgive and you forgive again and again every day. You forgive and forgive and forgive until the sting of that hurt is gone. Until the bad memory doesn't cause you to shudder anymore. And the word forgive means to let it go. When you let go of something, it's just a decision you make. It doesn't matter how you feel. You just let it go. Sometimes you let it go purely by faith. You decide in your heart, no matter what the offense, no matter what the hurt, the betrayal, I let it go. Jesus says, how many of you still love Jesus? Put up your hands, right? Amen. It says over here, love your enemies. Luke 6, verse 27. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. So you're deeply hurt. You've been betrayed. You've been wounded. Jesus wants you to bless the person who mistreated you, who betrayed you. You don't curse him. You don't wish for judgment on him. You just bless and keep on blessing. You bless the person's family. You bless his health. You bless his business, his career, his ministry. God, let the anointing increase more and more in his life. You pray for only good things to happen to his life. And this was what I did. I blessed by grace through faith. Again and again and again and again and again until I'm walking in a constant atmosphere and state of forgiveness. And I discovered that only with constant forgiveness it is possible to have zero anger in your life. And this is my personal experience. It is possible if you're willing to keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. Turn your neighbors on the left and right and say, constant forgiveness. <laughs> All right. Number one, zero anger. Number two, constant forgiveness. Now, number three, unlimited patience. To your neighbors on your left and right and say, Siong already. Uh. <laughs> Unlimited patience. This is a biblical word. It's in the Bible. Jesus has unlimited patience. This is what Paul tells Timothy. It's in the NIV Bible. In Luke chapter 1, and it says in verse 16 that Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience. This was what Paul was most impressed about by Jesus. His patience has no limit. And that is why to Paul, what is the first characteristic of love? Patience. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. 1 Corinthians 13. How patient is love? Love bears all things, believes all things, 
Love hopes all things, endures all things. And unlimited patience is true power. The patient man or woman is a very powerful person. Proverbs 16, verse 32, better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper, than one who takes a city. You see that? If you have unlimited patience, you are stronger than a mighty warrior. You are greater than the ruler of a city. Moses was a very strong leader, but what made him strong was his unlimited patience. His own brother and sister falsely accused him. He didn't even retaliate. He kept quiet. He learned to be still and know that he is God. He learned to have godly silence and committed everything to the Lord. God, I just trust you. You're gonna work everything out. Hey, it takes a very strong person, a very spiritual person, to have the fruit of unlimited patience. You're really becoming like Jesus. How many of you really want to be like Jesus? Put up your hands. Yeah. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right, say unlimited patience. In the Gospels, Jesus talks about the pearl of great price. How do you get pearls? A grain of sand gets into the oyster between the flesh and the shell. And it irritates the oyster to no end. I know some of you say, man, pastor, I got a lot of grains of sand in my life. <laughs> it greatly hurts the oyster. But the oyster doesn't spit it out. The oyster has a lot of long suffering. It has unlimited patience. So it secretes nacre, a special saliva, to cover the hurt. Every time it hurts, it just secretes saliva. Over time, what caused that hurt becomes a beautiful, precious pearl. In a sense, we are like oyster. God never wastes a pain. Whatever grief you're suffering today, if you are patient and you deal it with love and prayer and learn to be still before the Lord and if necessary, covers it with godly silence, it will eventually become a precious blessing to you. And this is what I'm learning to practice regularly, daily, forbearance, godly silence. By the Spirit, I have learned even if things are imperfect and they don't go my way, I can still be loving and gentle and tender. Every day I ask the Lord, Father, help me. Help me to cultivate unlimited patience so I don't get fed up, so that I don't get annoyed by anything. Let me tell you, it's not easy because I'm a strong leader. I'm a visionary. I'm goal-oriented. I like things done in a certain way. <laughs> in fact, sometimes I like things done yesterday. <laughs> but as I focus on the unlimited patience of Jesus, I realize many things that are annoying and really not so important in life. The greatest is love. If I have love, I already have everything. Okay, everybody say out loud. Say zero anger. Zero anger. Constant, forgiveness, Constant forgiveness. Unlimited patience. Unlimited. That's all the time we have for today. Guys, listen. The best thing I can do for you as a pastor is to teach you how to love. Because God is love. The best thing I can do for City Harvest Church is to build this house on love. Bring you deeper and deeper into the divine embrace of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Bring you deeper and deeper to occupy the space of their circle of love. Tonight, how many of you want to go deeper in the love of God? Let me tell you, in that space of shared love, of the triune God, is healing and deliverance, is restoration and wholeness. Oh, come on, go ahead and praise God, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Come, let's all stand out on our feet right now. Tonight, let's offer our devotion, our love to the Lord. Shall we just lift our holy hands? Right, if you love the Lord, just lift up your hands, just begin to sing to Him a new song. 
Just love the Lord, just love the Lord, just love the Lord. Just come into that circle of love. Let's stand and occupy that space of their shared love. Just let the love of the Father, let the love of the Son, the love of the Holy Spirit wash over you. Hallelujah. To be in the presence of the Lord And not know what time it is Because time stood still And bodies were here Because we stay here In the presence of the Lord No one had to say the word what your Christian faith is all about. God wants us to come into that divine embrace of love. Christianity is not just the forgiveness of sin, buying that insurance, having that fire insurance to escape hell, to go to heaven. Or it's just another avenue, you know, for you to get blessings so that you can be richer, you can have protection. When you drive in the car, your car will not have accident. No, it's much more than that. God wants to take our church deeper because God is love. Tonight you saw again and again in the scripture, God is love, God is love, God is love. God wants us to come into His loving embrace. God wants us to become one with Him. 
God wants to change us from our unlikeness to Christ-likeness. Tonight, how many of you want to go deeper with God as we come to the end of this year? It's been a great year for us as a church. We all have our individual challenges, but overall, it's been a good year. But how many of you say, God, I'm not satisfied. I'm hungry for more. I want more. I want more for my life, for my family. I want more for my cell group. I want more for the church. I want to come deeper into your loving embrace. I want to come deeper to be one with you. I want to be changed, to be more like you. If that's you, just lift up your hands all over this room right now. Why don't we sing from the beginning one more time? Hallelujah. No one's life to be in the presence of the Lord.
If you want more of Him, just begin to pray, just worship Him. Just tell Him that, Lord, I want more of you. Suduria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la suduria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la caraba. Suduria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la caraba. Suduria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria la caraba, deria. Hallelujah. Let's look at pasta for a moment. You learn three things tonight. Zero egg. Constant forgiveness. Unlimited patience. I can tell you something that I have not practiced. I can't lead you to a place I've not been. But I can tell you this because I have tasted and seen that it's true. God is good. If you cultivate those three things, you will find a supernatural rest in your soul. You will discover the easy yoke and the light burden. How many of you tonight, I want every eye to close and every head to bow. How many of you tonight? I mean, you heard pastor preach on this. You try, maybe, sometimes it's very hard. You still lose your cool, get angry, get irritated lose your temper but as we come to the end of the year sometimes it's not how you start but it's how you end you say God I still want to be more like you slow to anger abounding in love how many of you tonight as we come to the end of this year getting ready for our next year you say Lord help me by the power of the Spirit come and change me to be more like you I want to learn from you for you are gentle and lowly of heart and you say if, if we are like you we will find rest for the soul and we will find that easy yoke and the light burden how many of you tonight you say God I want to have zero anger if that's you just lift up your hands all of this place right now hallelujah put down your hands how many of you you need to constantly forgive and there's still people that you're angry you just don't like the sight of them irritates you Sometimes the sound of their voice irritates you. Their very presence irritates you. The thought of them in your mind. But tonight, Jesus says, you pray for them. You bless them. You bless good things. Tonight, how many of you want to live and walk and function in a constant atmosphere and be in a constant state of forgiveness? If that's you, wherever you are, just lift up your hands right now, this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put down your hands. How many of you from tonight, you want to learn unlimited patience? Unlimited. Not because this is a, something, something new, a slogan. No, but this scriptural. It's in the Word. Paul says, it is the unlimited patience of Christ that changed my life. How many of you tonight want to be like Jesus? And that means you bear all things. That means you believe all things. You hope the best in people. And you endure. You forbear. Sometimes it means you just got to take three steps back and be still. Sometimes it may mean, of course, sometimes you need to confront the issue. But other times it may mean you need to practice godly silence. And just be patient. You know, something amazing happens when there's unlimited patience. You find rest. You find easy yoke, light burden. You become a very strong person. You become mightier than a warrior, than a ruler who takes a city. You become very spiritual. You become like the Lord. How many of you tonight, you want to learn unlimited patience? If that's you, just lift your hands all this place. Come, let's just lift our hands. Just talk to God right now. Show Duria la Carabaha, Duria la Suduria la Carabaha, Duria Suduria la Carabaha, Duria la Carabaha, Duria la Carabaha, Duria la Carabaha, Duria Suduria la Carabaha, Duria. I want you to just focus on that person that hurt you, the person that betrayed you, the person that let you down, offended you. I want you to release forgiveness right now. I want you to release forgiveness. I want you to just let it go. Let go of the offense. Let go of the hurt. Let go of those words. Just let it go. Just let it go. 
Father, tonight, Lord, we will forgive. Lord, we choose to forgive those who sin against us, those that harm us, that have abused us, that have done us wrong, those that betrayed us, those that disappointed us. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we release blessing, we release forgiveness, we release, we pray for good things to happen to that man, that woman. We pray for good things to happen to the boy, that girl, their father, their mother, their relatives, their sibling, their brother, their sister. Hallelujah. Tonight, let's just pray, not just in tongues, but let's just pray for understanding also. Because Jesus says that this is how we should pray. And He taught us the Lord's Prayer. So let's all say it together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight. You are filling me with your love. I choose to love all my enemies. Those who hurt me, disappointed me, betrayed me, those that have mistreated me. In the name of Jesus, I forgive. Will you just mention to the Lord you forgive and then pray in tongues for a moment. Just forgive the person and then pray for one minute in the spirit. Pray that brother, that sister. Pray that father, that mother. Some of you just forgive your ex-wife. Some just forgive your ex-husband. Just begin to pray right now. Some of you just forgive your current spouse. Forgive your boss. Forgive your supervisor. Forgive your manager. Just forgive the cell group leaders. Just forgive the cell group member. Just forgive the pastor, the elder. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just forgive, forgive your colleagues. Just forgive your colleagues right now. Just release, just let it go. Let go of those words. Just let it go in the name of Jesus. Just let it go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to learn to bless. And this is what, just look at pastor, this is what I do. As long as the sting remains, as long as every time I hear the person's voice or I remember the person, I cringe. I learn to bless. Every time it happens, I bless. So tonight, I'm going to teach you how to bless. So let's all declare this together. Close your eyes. Let's all say it together. Say, in the name of Jesus, I bless my enemy. I want you to focus on that person, right? The person that hurt you and all that. Everybody say, in Jesus' name, bless with good life. Prosper the person. Bless with good health. Bless in coming in. Bless in going out. Bless in the career. Bless in the marriage. Bless with good things. Anointed things from heaven. I want you to lift up your hands and bless that person in tongues right now. Just bless the person right now. Father, tonight I just pray for all the members of City Harvest Church. Tonight I pray, Father, as we learn to release forgiveness, as we learn to have zero anger, as we decide tonight to be constantly forgiving, as we learn to have unlimited patience, I pray tonight that you fill us with your love. I pray tonight that, Lord, every sting of bitterness be plucked out of our life. Every word, every curse that's spoken over us be broken in the name of Jesus. Tonight I cancel every curse over our lives, every curse of failure, every curse of defeat. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. For to Him, Lord, through Him who loves us, because of your love, 
We are more than conquerors. No curse shall establish its purpose in us. Every attack of the enemy shall be overturned. We shall be blessed more than ever before, seven times more. We shall be blessed double, triple, quadruple in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to hold your neighbor's hands on your left and right if you can, if you feel comfortable. I want you to pray for one another that the blessing of God will come. Every curse is broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. enjoy that love every time you choose to obey the Lord and yield to him his love comes upon you just enjoy it tonight his presence is here his love is here just send your affections back to the Lord just just love him back. Just close your eyes and just love the Lord. Send the love of your heart back to him. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love. If you love the Lord tonight, can you just give him a big hand right now? gonna have can you just stay just five more five ten more minutes just tomorrow I, we got to shorten the service because we got an image event and the image workers they work so hard and uh, why don't we just give all the image people a big clap they work so hard I think Calvin and Sin have they have not slept for the last few days you know by the way that was a very great word that you gave today thank you so much and then next week we have our candlelight and all our singers Oh, they work so hard to prepare for it, you know. And let's give all of them a big hand. Hallelujah. And then don't forget the drama. Oh, Sandy and Jess. Come on, let's give them a big hand. It's going to be so good. Yeah. But can we all agree on one thing? Let it not be 
the skill that will impress people that God is real. Let it not be how organized everything is, how perfect it is, that when we sing the song, boom, the, the lyrics come at the right time, at the right place, boom, the lights come on, at the right place, you know, the angels fly across the room, you know. <laughs> If there's anything that will move their heart, that will melt their heart that Jesus is alive, it's the love that we have for God and the love we have for one another. Yeah. And let me tell you this. In a big church like this, it's inevitable. The bigger the church is, the harder it is to stay together in love. Because you got a lot of people, different people with different agendas, different vision, different ideas. It takes a lot of... It takes a lot of decision. I'm going to love. I'm going to love. I'm going to love the pastors. I'm going to love the cell group leaders. I'm going to love the ministry heads. I'm going to love one another. I'm going to love that person, the ushers that didn't usher me to my seat today. I'm going to love the person today. It's going to take a lot of decision. So tonight, I'm not going to let you go. And I hope you love me for that. <laughs> because I want, this is what I want you to do. I want brothers to find 20 brothers and give them a hug and say I really love you and then sisters find 20 sisters and give them a hug and say I really love you and while you're doing that I want I, I want the singers musician can we sing that the old song I know you're my brother that song uh, yeah 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 y'all can do it y'all can do it I hope y'all love me for that right and uh, all that Okay, we're, we're going to do this tonight. We have time, we have time. Now, this is important, this is important. Guys, because this is what that is going to, this is what that's going to make thousands of people come to Christ in the next two weeks. By this will all men know you're my disciples if you have love for one another, all right? So we're going to do that. Then after that, can you do me, after you find that 20 people to hug already, can you find your cell group leaders and then go and hug? Go and look for your cell group leaders, right? Then go and hug your cell group leaders. If your cell group, then go and look for your connect group leaders. Then after that, if you if you got time, if not in a hurry, can you go and find your pastors? Make sure, don't let them run out of this place, and find your zone supervisors, your pastors, and give them a hug. And uh, can we just do that, right? Okay, everybody, on the count of three, you go. All right, twenty men and women, ready? Go, give them a big hug right now. Hallelujah. Go, 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 go.
service is over. Fellowship just began. Yeah. If, but you don't need to go back to your seats. I'm just going to dismiss you. And uh, we don't need, we, I don't think we need Johan to come and hype us up. I think we are pretty hype already. Just go ahead and just, just love one another, all right? Just love one another. God bless you. Have a great week. <laughs>